And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a couple newcomers to the temple. They are they are two parts of the of the multi-headed monster that is World Eater Games, developers of the upcoming project Bittersweet Birthday, which managed to get um, very well funded on Indiegogo. Congratulations for that, by the way. In the blue corner, the man who will who will take any chance he gets to remind you to watch Hunter Hunter. Yes, even in this interview, Ricardo <laughs> Noriega, and in the blue corner, the man who is supposedly not a robot. Supposedly, we're still unsure about that. But will co but will code but but his coding abilities are relative to his um coffee supply. Eric Desedas, how you two doing tonight? Doing great so far. Happy to be here. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, I yeah. can hundred percent confirm I'm human. By the way, <laughs> I'll be the I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> but of course, I I had I had to get those get I had to get those gags in because um I hold these truths to be self evident that all men are cremated equal. Or what? Everybody gets the roast. All men are all men are cremated equal. Okay, okay. Go ahead. It's fine. Uh, that is that is my form of a that is my form of equality. <laughs> That's actually perfect. I agree. Yeah. Hundred percent. So, I I like to start these kind of things with the humble beginnings. So, two two, th um, a couple of things. I'd like you to walk me. I'd like you to walk me through um, how you ended up stumbling into get. How you ended up stumbling into game design, and secondly, um, how, you, how the two of you met up and and got the idea in your head to actually make a game, be, and whether or not it was a case of peer pressure on one on one person's part. <laughs> okay, so basically, the the main propulsion for us to make a game was the fact that um, when I graduated, I studied in, in the US, in Florida. I studied computer science. Mm -hmm. And after graduating and returning to Panama, I realized that like that, that career, is, is, there are no jobs for it here. Uh, because Panama is a service country, not a production country. Mm -hmm. um, so I was pretty bummed about that because the alternative was to make websites or or phone apps and stuff like that which i hated i still do and and so it just kind of it was it reminded me that before choosing uh computer science i actually wanted to get into game development mm -hmm. but i didn't because it wasn't as like as safe as of a thing to study i guess um, and so I just decided to, well, I guess it's the time to take a risk and make a video game. And first I started alone and eventually I invited uh, Eric to join. And the way we met was back in like 2006 or seven, I think six. Yeah, six. And we've been friends since, that, since then and like we've hung out all all along like no pauses we've been friends since and we've obviously played a bunch of games together we both studied uh programming related stuff mm -hmm. so like it just and and we knew each other so well we we, knew, we know that we had the same uh tastes in video games so i knew that he would like to do whatever i wanted to do like we would agree on a lot mm -hmm. so i invited him and he was available and well we just got into it at that point. Yeah, it was basically like, hey, hey, dude, you want to make a game? Like, hell yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. That, that was the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. like, the, the one that started it all. 
Now, forgive me if the, forgive me if this sounds too American of a reference, but between the two of you, which one is Abbott and which one's Costello? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. I'm so sorry. I hear those names, but I don't know what they mean. Oh. <laughs> uh, I usually I usually end up asking this kind of thing whenever there's these whenever there's these sorts of duos to see um who to see who's the funny man and who's the straight man. Um, I I I think uh, Eric is probably a bit more subdued in his humor, but I I actually think he's funnier than me. But he just the way he delivers everything is fairly deadpan, and mm -hmm. it's just like a quick comment. Really hidden in the conversation, but if you pay attention, it's like the most hilarious thing. So, I'd say he's funnier actually, mm -hmm. just not right. like in the conventional way, I guess. It's basically like a critical hit uh, joke. If you want consistency, you're gonna have to go with Ricardo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a bit more um, like over the table about being funny. He's more under the table about it. I got, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So. With that, with that in mind, I'd like you to, I'd like you to walk me through how um, Bittersweet Birthday was conceptualized. Was it a case of wanting to make a game based on the kind of games that you liked, or was there a different story? It, it's, it's a combination of many factors, obviously. Um, so at first, we were very con concerned about making uh, a big game because this is the first game we made and so we wanted to start like slow to learn the ropes and everything and that plan did not go well <laughs> the game is fairly big now um but still many decisions were made based on trying to stay uh, as low profile as possible i guess so for example the decision for the game to be a boss rush was made because we didn't want to have like a huge, huge, huge sto story with dungeons, many enemies and all that. We just wanted to have like the go straight to the point, like all boss fights. Mm -hmm. And so that that was like a driver for that. So basically budget, I guess, budget and time, I would say, that drove that decision. Mm -hmm. But also we are both huge fans of JRPGs and like the way they tell the, their stories so we obviously also wanted to have some of that so i guess it's a combination of of like rational decision making like budget but also like we want to do this now yeah, a lot of the a lot of the mechanics that it it actually uses based on the boss rush we were inspired with things like monster hunter or, things, or something like that like uh, we actually liked a lot the dynamic of every single encounter is important so that's what that was a big part of the decision i can i can certainly see that and um there, there's a couple there's a couple other games that when i when i was digging around for information for uh, research for this interview that um ended up getting brought up as a point of comparison i'm curious if these at all were um were inf were influences. Um, one of them is um, is Toho, like the Toho mm -hmm. se the Toho series as a whole. Yeah. Um, so that that inspiration is not not only but mainly for the particular fight that is in the demo. Like not every fight will be a bullet hell. Um, some will have elements of it, but yeah, that's not necessarily like a core principle of the game. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, like it was basically, um, I think, just at the time I was designing that fight. Um, do you know this YouTuber called Richard Ev? He he makes like metal covers of. Yeah, I, yeah, I know him. Yeah, I know. he re he released uh, an album of for for Toho. And I really, really liked it. And I was like, "What the hell is a Togo?" <laughs> so I, I played one of it, one of them, and I really, really liked it. Obviously, I sucked, but I, I managed to beat it in I don't know a couple of difficulties. I think it was Togo Seven. It might have been. Mm -hmm. And like I, I noticed that I could 
put some of it into our game and it will be cool. And also another inspiration for it that maybe was even earlier than that was near Automata. Uh, the sections, the hacking sections when you are 9S, that, that was also a huge inspiration for that particular flavor of gameplay in the fight. And the, now, when, now, um, given the given the notion, given because of the fact that this is a um pixel art um boss boss rush with an overhead perspective, the other game that I saw some folks comparing comparing this to was um Titan Souls. It yeah, was, I've seen that comparison too, but at at least it's not on purpose. I mean, I haven't played that game, so. Yeah, I, I, don't I, know. I can obviously see the similarities, but... Yeah, I mean, I see, exactly, I see footage of that game, and it's, like, pretty... Like, I can see why, but, like, any decision or any design element that resembles it is basically coincidence, because, yeah, I, I haven't gotten around to playing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the most probably is just that we both have the same inspirations behind that. Like, say, I don't know, a Hyper Light Drifter or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, given given the um, given the set given the setup that you have that you have with it be with it being a um, <clears throat> a boss rush, how do you how do you go how do you go about making sure that um, that bo that boss encounters don't that um, the boss encounters in the flow of of things doesn't get too predictable. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Cut off a bit. How do you how do you make sure that um, boss encounters don't don't get to, don't get too predictable or, or repetitive in how in how they flow? Well, right now there's only one fight in the demo, like actually in the game. And we're still missing uh, like the the rest of the story to be in the game, so I don't think that's an answer I could answer. I, I, that's not a question I I could answer with with <laughs> with authority because it's not a problem I have really solved yet, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Um, but at least I can say that the way we're breaking up fights. Um, we're trying as much as possible to to have a bit of optional content between each of them uh, in order to avoid like because it's it's a story game mainly like it's a boss rush but also we are very focused on telling a big story like and JRPG as I said we're huge fans of that genre so it's 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 a, for sure it's a balancing act of when fights are coming, when uh, optional uh, sections are coming to. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, like it's it's a bit hard to answer for sure because uh, honestly, it's not a problem we've solved yet because we we are still to actually put everything in the game and see how it flows. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. To also to prevent like every fight from feeling basically the same. That that's something that. I, I think that could be a problem with uh, some boss rush games. Uh, we we actually want each boss to have its unique gimmick. Mm -hmm. Like there's something special to to this fight that you're gonna have to basically kind of get used to, kind of learn. Uh, for example, uh, Rock over here is a bullet hell. Mm -hmm. uh, then another fight could be a combo based. Uh, I don't know, a combo based combat, close combat, something like that. Another fight could be so, sort of like a puzzle, sort of like a more, more of a dungeon-y like fight instead of actually just going and hitting someone. Like we want each one to be a bit unique, but just as Ricardo said, we haven't gotten around to implementing them, so that's basically a theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so for for like expanding on on that that thing Eric said. Um, you, you know, like we're, we're trying something that's, I guess, pretty daring that goes against what, um, most game designers would suggest. Mm -hmm. And it's the, the way that the difficulty curve is, is built. Like we're starting, like it's pretty steep right at the beginning. Like 
the the fight that's in the demo, the rock fight, really forces you to learn the mentality that you have that you need in order to actually play the game successfully, right? And then from from then on, fights don't actually ramp up in difficulty that hard, or at least that's the design in 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 our heads, right? We like I said, we're still to implement them, but um, the design that is done is like that. Like we what we want is not for every hard, every fight to be harder than the previous one, rather than to be different. So like Eric said, exactly like that. So Rock is a bullet hell, but then the next fight might be like um, a stance focused uh, fight with counters and like attacks with weird um, timings. Mm -hmm. um, so like, yeah, that's, that's the plan at least. That's what we're aiming for. Basically, it's gonna be a wild ride. Yeah. <laughs> now, given, given that, with these kind with these kind of boss rush games, there's always the whole thing of of memorizing the pattern and memorizing what you can d can do. So even even with even with the change of themes within boss fights, is there still is there still a degree of consistency in terms of what actions you're going to have access to throughout? Right, right, right. I, I, in in every fight, you'll be you have the same controls for yourself, I guess. Is that what you're saying? What you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the the thing is that we really, really, really want uh, to have the spotlight on the enemies rather than on the player. Like, for action games, in my opinion, um, like, there, there are those two schools, basically, where who has the focus? Who Who is the one that is able to do cool shit, basically? So you have games like... I don't know, Devil May Cry, where it's definitely you, the one that gets to do cool shit. Mm -hmm. But then you have like old school Monster Hunters and, and Dark Souls, where your moveset and what you're able to do is actually pretty limited. But then it's the enemies that get to do the cool shit. And it's really, in my opinion at least, it's not a, a matter of which one is better. It's just a matter of which one you like more. And mm -hmm. I personally like more when the enemies are the ones that, that do cool stuff. So that's what we're aiming for. Mm -hmm. Now, with with that with that kind of thing in mind, um, even even throughout it, is there still the, is there still the theme of um, breaking the enemy's focus in order to do more damage? Uh, that would probably be implemented it's in some way or another in in most fights, since that's something like you actually interact with. But, yeah, that's a core uh, mechanic. Yeah, that's that's like a core mechanic of the game, but that how it it uh, it is expressed will depend on I don't know the flavor of the enemy. Maybe it doesn't work the same as was what happens right now in this fight. We'll have to see, but it is definitely something you will have to uh, kind of master to actually win every single fight. Mm -hmm. Now, when now um, you sh I remember Ralph Coster. <clears throat> talking about the where um where fun is derived from in games is players come players coming up with solutions to op to obstacles put in front of them and being rewarded for that which brings me to the reward aspect um give, given how um given how enemy f given how enemy facing the ga the game is going to be what um Aside from more story, what sort of reward is there at the end of encounters that you're um con that you're considering? Um, at least, like it, it's the the game is not really an RPG in the sense of like I would I would guess I would say self expression or or like character building aspects like there there's basically no character building stuff there are no stats um no abilities um like skills passive or so, like so as far as gameplay goes uh there will probably be no rewards for beating the the enemies other than the fact that you beat it in in and of itself mm -hmm. you know like 
yeah, so there's no leveling, there are no ex experience points. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, I would say it's just the fact that you beat a hard enemy is the reward on it, on itself. And then you get to see more of the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since, since the story will be actually really dense and really packed with several side quests and stuff between fights, uh, that, that's actually uh, kind of the reward as well, because like, there's a lot of stuff to do in the town right now after you beat Rock, for example, but you can just keep it if you if you want to rush through the through the boss rush element of the game. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we're kind of aiming like to to give uh, the player like the ability to explore and the ability to discover more of the world between fights. Uh, but but just as, as Ricardo said, like not on the gameplay itself. It it will probably be very minimal if there's something. Yeah. Yeah. And that brings me to what I believe is what I believe is your your means of adjusting the difficulty of the game through the memory system. <clears throat> yeah. Um, how did that kind of thing come about, and um, how is it how how are you planning to have it work in the in the full um, setup? So that came about um, because. Right now, I actually think the the fight is like I really like the level of difficulty that the fight has as of this moment. But like, let's say um, a year ago, it was considerably harder. And at that point, I was pretty adamant about it being that hard. So we, I came up with a, it was me and, and one of the the artists that came up with the idea of memories because it, it really like it was a chance to connect gameplay with the story like you know like when when you get to do that it's a pretty cool feeling like when i don't know the the fact that uh the bonfires in dark souls and like you are an undead and you die and that represents like coming back to life because you're an undead that, that like kind of combines the story with with the gameplay so Memories, we saw the chance to do something not exactly the same, obviously, but like to do that, you know. And also, um, in the overall discourse on about difficulty on games, I'm actually in the side that says that not every game has to have a difficulty slider. Like it, it depends on 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 what the vision for the game from the developers is. You're in good company but, here, then. That whole that whole every game should have an easy mode um, discourse. I find I find to be yeah questionable. yeah yeah. I I I honestly think that it's a case by case basis. Like some games benefit from it, and some games like lose from having it. Um, but yeah, basically I. Like we reached the con the decision or consensus that really, even though we want the game to be hard, like there's not really huge, huge, huge narrative reason for why the game should be like ultra unforgivingly hard. So we were fine about giving like options. And so another thing about the memories is that they we are trying to not make them feel like you have to use them you know like it's it's not as if you would get a, a medal in hollow knight and you would instantly consider at least using it because it's like an objectively good thing that you probably need in order to advance but in pierce with birthday what we want is just like it's basically the way you set the difficulty but rather than being on the settings is a gameplay element <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. and also we are very conscious and very um, like aware and trying to design them such that you would still have to engage with the game. So we're going to avoid things like oh, you you get uh, less dam, uh, like you get hit um, softer or you hit harder. So most of the things would be like basically increment the rewards for good playing but you still have to play good in order to get those rewards mm -hmm. so for example we have that memory where if you knock down the enemy he will stay longer on the floor and that's like a bigger reward for the same thing but you still have to 
like catch them and knock them down mm-hmm. you know so that's what we're looking for like to make things slightly easier but still force you to actually learn how to play like not face tank the enemies and and just without a care as if you were like playing kingdom hearts on beginner which is absolutely like that you can just press x in front of the enemy and they'll die eventually and they hit so so softly that you won't die ever we want to avoid that kind of situation so yeah now with with that kind of th- with that kind of thing in mind is is the is the approach that you have is the approach that you're going to have is that each um each positive and negative memory <laughs> adds a different um modifier to ha- to the base game yeah i say so. um, it's, yeah. speaking of oh what well, you want to talk about the the negative memories please eric sure uh well Basically, uh, we we are not only aiming to uh, make the game easier. That's just as uh, Ricardo said. Like it is basically like you kind of get to choose your difficulty by uh, setting them, and that includes making it harder. Like some people may have discovered if they play the demo for a second time. Mm-hmm. That I, I don't know. It's basically like that. Um, I think that um, could you cover a bit more on the negative side of the memories? I think that I kind of forgot a bit about that. <laughs> That's my I'm more, I'm more of the design guy. Yeah. So for for negative memories, uh, with, with that we're a bit. I'm trying to be a, a bit more lenient because anyone that wants to make it harder, kind of. I wouldn't say doesn't care, but it's happy with the fact that it's harder. Period. So for 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 that side of the coin, we would allow for for a memory like you get hit uh, for double damage or something like that because that does affect how you play in a good way rather than being hit for half the damage, which affects how you play but in a bad way. You know. I feel like I feel like in some on some level you're baiting for for certain YouTubers to do no hit runs of the game. <laughs> There will, there will probably be, um, in, in the game goes well at least, there will probably be challenge runs, yeah. Because a, a few of the bad memories we have thought about are pretty intense. <laughs> well, if, um, there's, there, if people can go through Resident Evil 4 with nothing but the survival knife, um, there is a... A pr- there's there are gonna be people who try and put on all try and turn on all of the negative memories, just to, sure see, just to see how far they can take it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to be fair, there are people that beat like Dark Souls with uh, Donkey Kong Bongo. So yeah, mm-hmm. the sky's the limit over there. But yeah, we uh, negative memories don't really have a ceiling, unlike positive memories. Mm-hmm. So, with that now, with that in with that in mind, um, you meant you mentioned earlier about the about the village, and when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to the when it comes to the exploration aspect between um, boss fights, is you talk you talk about it being a world building puzzle. I'd like you to I'd like you to go into what that's going to entail. Um, so being that that's more of the story side, I guess I'll answer it. Um, so I really, 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 really like, um, when games don't feed you the whole story in your face, you know, I, I like it when you can miss stuff that's not critical to the main plot, but gives you a way better picture otherwise. Right, so that's it's basically our attempt at that, mm-hmm. and ha- having so much optional content um, that, and, and we're really shooting for a lot of optional content. You know, um, basically our main goal with it is is to have to increase the lifetime of the game, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like we don't want the game that you uh, beat it. 
and then you think to yourself, oh, I saw everything, so now I'm going to stop thinking about this game. No. So basically, what we want that if you beat the main campaign mm -hmm. and, and you don't finish like absolutely 100% of everything that there is, we want to give you that itch of knowing, like, wait a minute, like this other thing that wasn't really critical to the plot, but was a really cool plot point, what happened to it? Mm -hmm. And basically we want to encourage discussion and like lore hunting and uh theories and all that mm. and even like even as early as right now you know there, there's only the demo and even though it's it's pretty long for a demo it's not that long for for a game mm -hmm. like we have uh, people in our discord <laughs> demanded a lore and theories channel and it gets used pretty often, like, there's so many theories, like, it's actually pretty fulfilling and, and really cool to see that, uh, to see, like, our plan actually working, and now it's only a matter of scaling that towards the final game. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting you bring that kind of thing up, because um, when it comes to lore, speculation, and, and all that... It can cert it can certainly be a careful tightrope to walk because um, obviously if obviously if you don't um, if the if the answer that's never that's given is one is one that isn't satisfa isn't one that's not um satisfactory you can have a situation where the where um all, where a lot of people who were doing all that speculation felt like that time was being wasted. Also, this is also known at this is also known by certain pros as pulling a Shyamalan. <laughs> yeah, I I definitely agree that it's it's a tight rope to walk on, but I mean we're up to the challenge, man. Mm -hmm. We're going for it. And with the, with that with that kind of thing in with that kind of thing in mind, um. When it comes to when it comes to things like the the um, side quests that are that are going to be in the town, um, are you go are you going to be making sure that there is a good amount of variety in terms of what you're actually doing? Uh, um, that's like the intention, but we we are actually uh, we'll have to we'll have to think about uh, what to do uh, really hard in those quests because. Uh, we want to avoid like just having a lot of fetch quests, just having a lot of escort quests, something like that. That I, I've seen many games have, but uh, that that will be like the main objective. Like everything, at least to make everything feel at least a bit unique. If not on what you do, on what they deliver to the player. Mm -hmm. Like it, we don't want it to feel like a sh basically. That's so actually, I think this is a super interesting uh, discussion to have. Because I, I remember when we were first first starting to design all the side quests, I kind of reached, I, I don't know if I would call it a mental breakdown or what, but I basically reached the conclusion that there are only like three different side quests ever. Like every single side quest in every game ever is either a fetch quest or a kill quest or a just walk over there quest. You know, but even then you play games like The Witcher 3 and every side quest feels so good to play. Like it's one of those games that almost just by virtue of, of being so good forces you to do the side quests. Mm. But every side quest, mechanically speaking, is literally the same thing. Um, so we, we talked about it and we tried to analyze it as best as, best as we could. And for us, the conclusion was that what matters is the context of stuff and not, not really what you do, because again, there are only like three side quests that you can possibly ever do, mm. unless it involves like a mini game or something like that. And even then, it's like, do that mini game. It's, if you consider that one other side quest, then it includes every mini game. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's like uh, one example I've seen is like, it's different to tell someone to kill 10 rats rather than pull them into a story of like a house 
that got invaded by rats and and like they killed the I don't know the husband and now you have to like take revenge with with rats or whatever like those two things even though what you're doing is exactly the same mm -hmm. are completely different experiences to the player so like if you ask me how we're trying to keep things fresh like obviously what you end up doing for all of the quests will be walking around and finding stuff you know but we are going to try we're trying to make things interesting by what you're actually doing inside of the story i guess trying to make every interaction really fun and entertaining and like uh teaching you something i either about the world or about the characters or about the story like always trying to make you give you rewards that are not necessarily like an item that would benefit you in some way but for the story this is it's really a story driven game so we're trying to make as much as possible the reward to be more story because that that's what we're aiming for you know mm -hmm. uh which for example like Ali gave me like uh, infamous PTS, the that infamous game they gave PTSD of, of that because after you finish the campaign, it basically boils down to a uh, score quest and fetch quest, and mm -hmm. they they don't, didn't have any flavor. So yeah, just like you said, it feel it actually felt repetitive. the The objective here is like uh, trying to avoid people noticing that they are boiling down to the same kind of quest uh, based on their flavor and on their delivery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, with that, with that in mind, um, when it, the other, um, the other, so, the other side thing that I want that I want to touch on is, um, is got is gotcha pawns through the well gotcha machine, <laughs> and <laughs> um, how 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 um apropos how apropos um to have something like this given um certain events in the in the field but when it but when it comes when it comes to when it comes to that when it comes to them is it is it mainly it is it mainly a um a a kind of a kind of collectible for those who want to try and aim for a hundred percenting yeah pretty much pretty much is just like um, trying at least to some extent, because as we, as I said just now, that we are trying to make the reward for the side quest to be something like intrinsic and not not necessarily like an object in the game. Like we still want there to be at least a bit of a reward, and you're not getting every single gacha through side quests, so it's not like you have to do all of the side quests to get all of the gachas. Uh, but at least it's something that. For those that are not that much interested in the story, might be something that interests them, and it's just like a—it's literally a cool idea that we thought of, and uh, it was that was actually mostly uh, one of our artists, Servant, the one that came up with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he came up with the, you know, the the small sequence when you when you buy one and you get like the zoomed in face of rock and the main character like opening the uh, the gacha mm -hmm. yeah like i think he came like that was the first thing he thought of and then he he said like that's something i want to draw so let's come up with a mechanic that <laughs> lets us uh, have this in the game you know it was a really roundabout way about of coming up with with that mechanic, but yeah, in in short, it was just like a cool thing that we thought of, mm -hmm. and yeah, so we did it. We yeah. actually uh, we are trying to like see it. there's a French idea like that maybe they'll be involved in a mini game, but we are not sure yet. Yeah, we still have to plan it a bit just to tease that. Mm-hmm. So, with that with that in mind, um, one side thing that I that I was curious about is how how did you get in, how did you get in contact with um, Jerome Bailey, of of all of all people? 
the that was the alignment of like seven planets at the very least. Um, <laughs> so just wanted that. yeah, um, randomly like I used to use Reddit a lot, mm -hmm. but this entire the, the this entire year, I've, if I've used it more than five times in the whole year, it's been like that's too many times. I, I really haven't been using it this year. But this particular day, I went into it, and I was in the game development uh, subreddit, and I saw this post of someone saying like, "Hey, I've been doing music in the music industry for X amount of years, and I'm trying to get into the game development uh, music industry. Like, how how would you say I could get into it?" And I got curious. I got curious. I was like, "Who who could it be? Who could it be? You know?" And then I enter in the in the thread, and he says that, oh yeah, I'm the one of the composers of Epica. And I'm like, excuse me, what? <laughs> Pretty <laughs> sure that was a spit take moment. Yeah, and obviously, um, I, I'm I'm like a huge, 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 huge metalhead. I mean, it's literally all I listen to since I'm like ten or something. I'm 28 now. Um, so I obviously recognized them, recognized uh, the name Epica, and I immediately sent him a text through Reddit. I just laid it out, man, like, listen, I'm making a game, there's this character that is a, it's in a metal band, and you obviously have experience doing awesome metal tracks, so, like, how about if we work together? And I showed him the game, he really, really liked it, and he was, like, really excited from the beginning. So like we just added each other on Discord and chatted a bunch, and eventually he he did that prototype song basically mm -hmm. for for the game, yeah. And given given that there is a given that there is a um, variety of boss encounters with the game that with the game setup that you're developing, is is there a, is there a similar variety when it comes to giving bosses a musical identity? That you guys are planning something as specific as that i wouldn't say is planned as of now like obviously we want to give a song for every boss like that's a given but as far as to say like it's a different identity i'm not sure a song like, for each boss more more or less is what is um what I'm, what I'm, di what I'm dipping into with the whole. Okay, yeah, and, yeah, like yeah. That. Every every fight will have a different song. Absolutely, I, I I love that. I absolutely love that in games. So I want to have it in in my game, of course. Yeah, in fact, uh, I I would think that it would feel very weird if that wasn't the case on a boss rush. Probably. Yeah, and especially especially when you can especially when you. Can, Obviously, one of the um, one of the big one of the big examples when it comes to, to when it comes to <clears throat> pick when it comes to pixel based games that are that try to do the whole um, musical identity thing for a lot of people is going to be Undertale, and um, the the importance of the importance of the fact that would it be fair of me to say that your that your goal is that when you hear when if someone hears a certain track. Um, even if they're not playing the game, they're going to immediately think of that particular boss. Um, cer certainly, I mean, uh, but, but I would say that, um, and let me see how I put it. Like, I would be surprised if that wasn't the goal for every single game, like, you know? Yeah. So, so yeah, I would, I would say yes. We want that, but also at the same time, I don't think that's. Um, I think that's fairly standard. I would say to have like to want people to listen to a song in your game and and like identify it and and like it immediately. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Now, with that, with that in mind. Um, You've had, you had the you had the demo out for a good for a good amount of time. 
what would you say were some of the lessons, the takeaways and lessons that you ended up getting from the feedback of that demo? Well, the first thing is that um, it is it is cool to have a difficult fight, a difficult boss, but it is not cool if that difficulty feels unfair, which was the case with like the first revision of the boss. So uh, that was uh, uh, quite a big lesson on balancing. It's still hard, but it is way more uh, fair, let's say. Also, um, I don't know. You you actually. Uh, you can always like add, add new stuff, add cool mechanics, add fixes and everything to your game. But if you get caught in that loop, you are never going to release it. You're never going to like actually deliver something because uh, deep down, everyone that actually wants to jump into this kind of uh, this kind of development, like uh, making a game, mm -hmm. it's kind of a perfectionist. So there always there will always be something to improve. You basically have to get to the mental state where you say all right i'm gonna i'm gonna reach this milestone i'm gonna develop up until this point and then i'm gonna release it and let's see what happens because i actually need feedback from people i i really need to know if this idea will work mm -hmm. so basically like it's it's just a matter of jumping out in the water that was one of the biggest uh lessons i think we could learn from this experience mm -hmm. And in bet in between now, if now if I'm if I'm not mis if I'm not mistaken, um, you're pl you're planning on put you're planning on put the putting this on Windows, Max, Max, Mac, <laughs> Linux, and um, Switch. Um, yeah. Correct. Now, are now are. Are, uh, is it going to be the case where you, where um your where you guys specifically are going to be focusing on the on the PC formats and Pineapple Works is going to be handling the porting to the Switch? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, they they they're gonna help us with general QA anyway, but we we probably never see the process of the Switch port. Just because, like, I mean, Nintendo is special, and they don't set, send dev kits to Latin America. So, yeah, like, there's no way we can even do anything about it. So, yeah, we're, we're handling, like, base development, and then they're handling the port. All right, I, I, can, cer I can certainly get behind that. Um what what would you be sh what would i know it's i know it's fairly early and these kind of things are always in flux but what would you be shooting for as far as a release window like like a date you, you mean not a date but a gen but a general um a general ballpark oh we were we were planning to release it something like uh, the last, the fourth quarter of next year, around December, we are not really sure. It it, it will depend on what happens in between mm. what what remains of this year and the whole of 2022. But that's like the the original plan, let's say. And I I can cer I can certainly get behind that. Um, but with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come to come onto my show up at braving the hell of time zones to reach the temple and enjoy the madness at play here. <laughs> and of course, thanks a lot for inviting us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um any anytime you anytime you see fit to return to the temple, whether it's to discuss um further on with bit with bittersweet birthday, to talk about why Hisoka is a clown or or yeah, any, or anything in between. He definitely is a clown. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the do the uh, door is always open, as I often Thank say you. around here. Drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Oh yeah, and and of That's course, good. a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule mm -hmm. to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. Eh, and there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, 
On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!